How's it, how's it guys? Thank you ever so much for being here. It is wonderful to see you. Today, I'm gonna to share with you six tips that I wish I could have given as life lessons to my 19 year old photographer self when I just started out on this journey. Right, so really the first thing is, you know, no one cares. No one cares about your photography. That's it, it you know, and, and that, this is a good thing. It is such a good thing because as soon as you think that people really care about your photography, then you start changing the way that you approach the, the art of taking photographs. You become worried about what other people think about your work and all these kind of kind of things. And you also get, a, 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 I think, a, a, an overworked sense of self that you think, oh, you know, I'm all that in a bag of chips, which is not the case at all. That, you know, it takes a long time to become recognized in photography and in and, and, and a wider sense. So the sooner that you sort of ditch this idea that really people care, and, and they also like it, either care in a good way or care in a negative way, the, the, the quicker you become freer to rediscover the enthusiasm that you had for photography when you got started out, because you are just creating work for yourself. And that is a mantra that you should hold on to throughout your career, is to create work specifically for yourself first and foremost. I remember sitting in a class one Friday afternoon and it was quite sun, summer and it was all very hot and I was sitting at the back of the class because of course I was at the back of the class and I was idly sketching on my, um, my notepad instead of taking notes about the theory class I was in talking about the, the chemistry makeup of film I was drawing a timeline of how I was going to become famous so by 25 I was going to be nationally famous by 35, I was going to be internationally famous. By 45, I was going to be like the new Richard Avedon, <laughs> right? So, so that's the thing. So what was happening is I was focusing, like Luke Skywalker, on the future. I was never in the present doing something actually to move that forward, to get those goals to come towards me. I thought that photography was a, a finite game, that there was an end goal. That, that I would finish photo school uh, and that would just happen. And then, you know, from then it was just like, well, apprentice, then actual photographer and da 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 da. And forgetting that photography is, it is a journey without an end. Dan Winters called it like a road to seeing. And now the, the way that we see the world changes constantly. And that's something that I really wish you could understand is that how you think about photography right now, what you think is an achievement right now, is, is going to change, is going to shift and morph the more that you go down this path. Because around every corner in this, this experience is a new discovery, a new thing that may change you, a, a direction that you'd never even considered taking in photography. So from right now, be open to it. Be be happy to explore anything and your work will be so much richer for doing so. Those who can do and those who can't, well, they teach. And I bought into that lie, <laughs> like hugely as a student, because I was like, oh yeah, well, you know, if these guys are so good, these the lecturers, then they would be internationally famous. They would have awards come out the yin yang, people would fake their photography all over, because I'd fallen into this, this ridiculous concept that people who teach must be fantastically good at the thing that they're teaching. Forgetting, of course, that if that were true, then tennis coaches wouldn't exist and golf coaches wouldn't exist, <laughs> all these sort of things. That, you know, that there are people who have a wealth of knowledge about the thing that you do, the creative expression that you have, that are sharing it with you because they want to see you grow, they want to see you succeed. They also, importantly, want to know better about the, the craft that they enjoy. Because when you teach somebody something, that doesn't matter how small it is, you are relearning that thing. You are re-explaining it to yourself. And the best way to learn is to teach. So be free, be generous. Be open with whatever experience, whatever knowledge you have gained, because it 
only improves you. You're going to run into so many photographers who won't tell you anything. I'm not going to show you the secrets to anything and I'm not going to help you improve because why would I help you? Because you might take my work away. This sort of knowledge, this sort of, sorry, this sort of ridiculous way of thinking about photography, it's so narrow-minded. And for a little while, you kind of fell into it for a bit, but it's not nice. If somebody is looking for help, then, then offer it, offer it freely. You will benefit from the person who is asking for help because you will relearn what you are teaching them. Picture a door. So there was a door there at photo school. And for most of the students, we thought that that door was the entrance to a promised land of inspiration, of overcoming creative block, of, of, of freeing our, ex, our ex, the way that we expect ourselves in, in, in photography. Uh, and all you needed to do was just sidle up to the door, knock at it, and it would open. And you could then just pick whatever lens, whatever camera that you wanted. And there was a lot in there. There was all sorts of things you could possibly ever want. And then you would just then be inspired because you've now got a new lens or a new camera, some, a new toy to play with. And you forgot that that is completely the wrong way to think about it. You're thinking about it backwards. That you go, oh, the lens that I've got, this house of black, super wide or what have you, is going to inspire me. The, the gear is there to facilitate you getting what's up here into a photograph. It is not there to, you know, give you a, give you a heads up to say, wait, you know, let's, let's get in, just try some stuff out. So you're going to spend a lot of money in photography over the years and your investments are going to be uh, rubbish because they are always things that you think are going to be, uh, they're going to kickstart your photography in a certain direction. Now, glass, okay, glass, I would say that is a good thing because it holds its, its value. Good glass is worth its weight in, uh, well, glass, <laughs> right? But the rest of the stuff, it's just fluff. It's just fluffiness that doesn't really drive you forward. A far better investment is in education, in books, in biographies of photographers, of, of movies about photography, anything that you can get your hands on that will teach you about the, the why you take photographs, the language of photography is a far better investment than a piece of glass or something like that because the benefits will last with you for as long as you're taking photographs. So rather than spending, you know, $150 on, on filters or something, spend on books, spend on education, you know? There's, there's a far better thing. So hold on to that thought. The gear does not make you a better photographer. In second year, I took some headshots for a set of actors and I presented the shots to them and they said thank you very much and when I was out of earshot I heard them say these photographs they're not very good they're rubbish oh my god we should have gone with some so and so and those phrases those words which I was not supposed to hear stayed with me for a long time decades in fact and rather than focus on all the achievements, all the, 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 the compliments that I've ever received throughout my career uh, with, with photography, it's that overheard snippet of conversation that stayed with me for as long as I can remember. And, and it held me back because I was falling into that idea of imposter syndrome that maybe, just maybe, I wasn't actually as good as, as I thought I was. Um, that that I wasn't really supposed to be a photographer. That I, you know, I was. I'd been. I, I'd been picked to go to photo school by accident, and and that's a very insidious, soul destroying thing. And it's only going to get worse. Being at photography school was wonderful because we got a chance to be taught the language of photography, the words and the phrases that we can inject into photographs to make them resonate with a viewer, to construct something that has emotional impact. And these are the, the skills that all of us have within us, but are never really brought to the fore because who teaches it? Well, fortunately, I've put together a, a course based on my own experiences at photo school to help you create richer, more sort of 
meaningful, impactful, wonderful photographs that other people are going to go, wow, that's amazing. How did you see that? It's a course that you could do, oh, you know, in, in lunch break, a couple of days a week. But the benefits of, of knowing the language are going to be so great that they're going to stay with you long after you, know, <laughs> you stop watching this channel. So if you are interested in finding out more about this course, then go click on the description box below and the little link there, and that will take you to the Learning to See page. Social media is coming up, and that is going to blow everything away because all of a sudden people are going to define themselves whether or not strangers like their photographs and i don't have a definitive answer on how you can overcome imposter syndrome but i can give you this piece of advice every time you get a compliment every time that somebody says something positive about your photography remember what i told you right at the beginning that no one cares about your photography so they are not required to say nice things. Your mum and your dad, they're going to say nice things. But everybody else doesn't care. They will say nice things about your photography because, well, because they like it. Uh, <laughs> right? that's, that's why they're saying it. To you, even though you may not think that the rest of the world thinks you're an amazing photographer, there's probably one other person out there who goes, you are like the most amazing photographer I have ever seen. They will think you are all that and a bag of chips. So remember that. It doesn't matter what other people think or how you know you're, you think you're measuring up against them because this never ending journey that you're on as a photographer is only with yourself, right? Nobody really cares about your photography. You are free to make whatever photography that you want to. It's all these, these things. Now I'm gonna give you a little caveat with that nobody cares about what you create sort of thing. If you are going to be a professional, and this is kind of you know what I was wanting to do at the time, then yes, you need to kind of balance this idea of making work that is uniquely yours, but also that will please the, the, the client. And you can find this balance. You just have to kind of know how to read read clients and, and what have you and but that's not really the, the scope of all this but I just thought I'd throw that because you know somebody's going to mention in, in the in the comments below <laughs> about oh yeah but as a professional you need to do that and yes of course you need to to balance these things with the clientele but this is more about the the why we take photographs be mindful about the sort of people whose advice that you take when looking to improve your photography because I, I, there are so many people who just want to parrot off things that they learned last week and, and will say it in a very judgmental, non-beneficial sort of way. So a good rule of thumb with this is to sit and go, okay, well, if somebody says something about my photograph and you go, oh, well, you know what, if they don't offer something constructive in with it, then I, I think you can discount their 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 feedback, their advice, whatever you want to call it. If somebody helps you and says, okay, well, I see what you were trying to do. I see, okay, I kind of get where you're going. Have you considered trying this or trying that approach? And, and if that prompts a question, you're kind of like, oh, okay, so I sort of see where I'm going with it. Then those are people worth listening to. And you can find them everywhere. They don't need to be great photographers. They don't need to be people who are you know, having hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram or something like that. All that tells you about them is that they know how to get hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram. It doesn't mean that they are either a good teacher or that they understand how to help you improve your photography. You should also remember that even though most people have a camera, the majority of them will just take snapshots without any real thought. You are looking to be a photographer. And there is a distinction with this because I, I believe that having a camera doesn't just make you a photographer. Seeing the world and communicating your unique vision through photographs is the gift that you are exploring, that you are developing because you want to be, well, a photographer. And never, never be sort of like naive, not naive, but blasé about this idea because not everybody has this 
it's great that you want to explore it. It's great that you want to develop it because it's wonderful. It's an awesome thing to be able to sit there of an evening, sitting in your kitchen, watching you know, the sun go down with the pussycat on the wall and you know, the way things are and turn to your mom and say, wow, look at the clouds, look at all this sort of stuff, isn't that amazing? And then they turn to you and you know, she goes, do you know, I'm so glad that I have a son who, who can see the beauty in the world. And this is what you want doing. You know, it doesn't matter what you photograph. It doesn't matter what genre that you enjoy the most. You have a gift to see the beauty in everything. And I, I daily hope that you will continue to pursue it, to grow it, to nurture that, that, that gift. If you'd like to know the one thing that photo school should have taught me, then click on this video up here. I'm sure you'll find it exceptionally interesting and a real eye opener. Thank you ever so much for being here and I'll see you again soon.